All right, everyone, we're going to be diving deeper into climate change. In a previous video, I already talked about kind of the greenhouse effect a little bit and how it works. The science on that hasn't changed. It's all about incoming radiation and how that gets converted to a different wavelength when it goes outwards and how some of that gets reabsorbed and then sent back to the earth, producing a kind of warming effect. So in brief, we're going to take a look at that again with these nice little diagrams of this little sad guy that's supposed to be me. This is our model of the earth, which is actually a lot bigger. So we understand that the sun emits radiation. We get that. You already know it as UV radiation, which is short wavelengths. Remember that. If you just say short wavelength and long wavelength, I think that's going to help to make this uh, easier to kind of roll off the tongue when you're trying to explain this again. So the sun emits radiation, which reaches the earth. It's mostly short wavelength or UV radiation. 25% of it gets kind of absorbed up here in the atmosphere and 75% actually reaches all the way to the surface of the earth. It gets absorbed and then it's actually gonna be converted into heat energy. So this heat energy is longer wavelength it's infrared radiation and this is the stuff that starts to heat up the atmosphere so the earth actually re-emits that energy as longer wavelengths the longer wavelengths end up going back up to the air those are the arrows that are going pointing back from the earth they go back out some of them actually pass out into the solar system into the sp into space out there but a lot of it up to 85% of it actually gets trapped by these greenhouse gases up here, which are in our atmosphere. So it's kind of a web. We'll talk about why we absolutely do need this to happen, but why it's also bad, especially if we end up burning more fossil fuels to contribute more to these greenhouse gases. And so these gases, these greenhouse gases happen to absorb a lot of this infrared radiation. Its wavelength is just the right amount so that the bonds inside the molecules of some of these greenhouse gases. Probably the most famous is carbon dioxide because that's the one that humans are also putting a lot of into the atmosphere as well too. So carbon dioxide is really good at absorbing this infrared radiation and then re-emitting it back to the surface and so that's what contributes to this warming. We call this the greenhouse effect and it's a normal thing that actually happens when humans mess with it and we enhance it then we basically call it the enhanced greenhouse effect so the gases that are trapping this radiation we know them as greenhouse gases and we're going to talk more specifically about each of these greenhouse gases in a little bit but first let's take a quick commercial break as we take a look at 10 indicators of a warming world there you are you are so happy giant size like king kong but pause the video really quickly and see if you can identify which ones of these you already knew so obviously everything that's already related to temperature, you know that warming means temperature is going up. So temperature over the oceans is getting higher. Sea surface temperature is getting higher. We understand that if we have higher temperatures, then that means we're going to have some snow melting. That means glacier, glaciers and ice cover are decreasing. There's been a lot of news recently. Right now we're at the end of July and I've just read something uh, and watched some really cool but scary videos about how new ice sheets are forming from Antarctica breaking up. With more ice melting, that also means that sea levels will be rising as well too. Again, we have more temperature going up, temperature going up. There are many other indicators that stem from this as well too, including kind of the distribution of pests and disease as well too. So sea ice we already mentioned as well. And then also uh, the average humidity will be going up as expected from these temperatures increasing and messing with the water content in the actual air. So who's to blame for all of this? Well, interesting thing is we actually need the greenhouse effect. More about that later, but let's talk about these greenhouse gases first. So we already talked about how the atmosphere actually absorbs extra energy. It really depends on this radiation, this infrared radiation that gets re-emitted by the Earth after it comes as UV radiation or shortwave radiation from the actual sun. So the gases that classify themselves as greenhouse gases have to be able to absorb this long wave radiation and re-emit that heat energy. The most significant two gases that we know about are carbon dioxide and 
Water vapor. You might not have thought that water vapor is a major contributor, but it is. It's huge. But the reason why we don't talk about it as much as carbon dioxide is because the whole reason this is part of the conversation is because humans are burning lots of fossil fuels and the way that we live, live our lives uh, causes us to contribute a lot more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And so that's the one that we talk about as well. Methane, CH4, and nitrogen oxides are also contributors to uh, the greenhouse effect. They are greenhouse gases that can absorb this infrared radiation. Ozone, O3, in terms of being a greenhouse gas, but it is significant to help us block out extra UV radiation. So overall, when we're talking about the enhanced greenhouse effect, here is the overall distribution of the gases and which ones have more impact. So carbon dioxide by volume, that's definitely going to be the main one that we're talking about. It's important to note here, we put a little cute star. It says that methane produces more warming compared to a molecule of carbon dioxide, but because there's less of it, it has an overall smaller effect. So Molecule to molecule, one molecule of methane actually does more damage than one molecule of carbon dioxide. But by volume, carbon dioxide is our main culprit. All right, in the next video, we're going to continue talking about climate change, look more a little bit at the data and the evidence that supports this, some of the graphs, uh, some of the things that you might have to try to predict and explain when you see some of the data.